Welcome everyone. Today's movie recap is a film named American Made, a crime action movie that tells the story of a smuggler who becomes incredibly wealthy while working for the cartel, including Pablo Escobar, the CIA, and anyone else who offers money. So sit back, relax, and I know you'll enjoy this one. Based on a true story, the movie begins in 1978 where Barry Seal works as a pilot for Trans World Airlines. He is flying a plane while his co-pilot is asleep. He wants to be annoying and as everyone is knocked out, he takes off the autopilot and starts thrashing the accelerator and shaking the yoke or steering wheel, making everyone wake up. He then apologizes for the turbulence and begins laughing at the passengers. When arriving at home we see he is married to Lucy and has two children with her with a third on the way. While at a lounge one night, Barry is found by a man saying his name is Monty Schaefer. He is familiar with Barry's work as a pilot, and so, Schaefer offers him a chance to make better money by taking on reconnaissance missions for the CIA in a smaller plane with cameras just south of the border. Schaefer convinces Barry that he would be working for the good guys, but it would have to be kept completely secret, even from his own family. He then lets Barry take the plane out for a ride. As he begins his new job, Barry starts making tapes documenting his travels and exploits. He flies over Guatemala and gets shot at as he flies past and takes photos. Honduras is next, and the same thing happens but this time his photos taken are so superb the head of the CIA commends the pilot for his skills. El Salvador is the last one, but this time a turret shoots and hits his plane propeller, setting it on fire. He turns off the fire but the propeller does not turn back on. He manages to fly with one propeller to get himself to safety. Schaefer is so impressed with the photos that Barry brings back to him, that the CIA have assigned Barry with a new task of being a bagman between the CIA and General Manuel Noriega in Panama. He drops off some drugs and in return they get intel on all the communists. He keeps doing drop-offs over and over until, on one of his missions, Barry is asked by two men to get into a car. He is taken to a mansion owned by the Medellin cartel. He is taken upstairs and meets Jorge, a founder of the cartel which also includes Pablo Escobar. He already knows pretty much every detail about Barry's life. He wants to get their drugs into the United States and asks for Barry's assistance in exchange for riches. He takes him on a helicopter ride and shows off the whole forest as cocaine. He introduces Barry to Pablo Escobar and tells him about previous failed attempts. He wants Barry's help to take the coke inside the US which he offers him $2,000 a kilo. Barry cannot believe it and agrees to help. He puts 300 kilos of coke on his plane and makes them push the plane to the edge of the runway. Barry then starts his engines and begins takeoff. The men bet if he's going to crash or not. He pushes his plane to the limit and scrapes the tree line but manages to pull up and continue his flight. He gets back to the US and gets to a desolate location. He opens a secret hatch and starts throwing the coke tied up with life jackets out of it. The men on the ground start picking up the bags and the mission was a success. Barry now has the trust of the cartel. He goes back to them and is handed a backpack full of cash. However the DEA raid their compounds and Barry is inside. After hearing gunshots, he begins panicking and is eventually arrested. Pablo and his men are also arrested but are immediately released, probably from bribing the judge or something like that. Schaefer finds Barry in his cell and tells him there's a way out of this mess. He explains that those people he was taking photos of are a bunch of communists and called themselves Sandinistas. They managed to get themselves together and take control of a place called Nicaragua. It was the first successful revolution in Central America. And so, they wanted Barry to help the Nicaragua freedom fighters to fight against the communists, as the American population was scared of another Vietnam-like war, they didn't let the politicians have their way, so to supply the freedom fighters with guns and whatever else is necessary, they have instructed Barry to do this. He agrees to help and is told his house will be raided. Barry urges Lucy and the kids to pack up their things so they can move. Despite Lucy's questioning, Barry insists he cannot tell her a thing, leading her to lose trust in him. The SEALs move to Mena, Arkansas. Barry is taken to an airport by Schaefer and is told, It's all yours, including everything between here and your house. Almost 2,000 acres. He cannot believe it. I own all this? This whole airport? The planes and equipment are also his. He is then given a map that has the locations of each law enforcement agency and where they watch. He now knows exactly how to get around each agency undetected. He is even given his cash back from the Colombians and accepts his assignment. He goes home to his wife who is complaining about there being no washing machine or anything at all. He starts throwing cash around and shows her the bag of money. He mentions that he is working for the CIA. He begins with his first flight to meet with the Contras, but it ends with them robbing his stuff instead of taking the guns. Barry calls Schaefer and tells him they are more interested in his boots than guns. He goes for another meeting, but this time he finds Jorge and is happy to see a familiar face. The cartel then make an agreement with him. 
Barry loads up the guns in Mina, using Schaefer's intel, he'd bypass any law enforcement and go to Medellin and hand the guns to the cartel. He then picks up coke, goes to Panama to refill under the protection of his old friend that got a promotion and is a general. He'd get a cut as well. On the way back he'd dump the coke in the swamps of Louisiana. The operation got so big he needed help. Barry gets four other men to help him on his trips when he realizes the workload is too much for one guy to pull off. They fly separate planes on their missions and are all buddies of Barry. Schaefer then asks Barry to bring back some of the Contras to the US for the CIA's newly established training base. They set it up on Barry's land and upon arrival some of the men run away. Barry's business grows so much that he gets more guns to send, bring back more people, take photos and get intel while delivering coke on the way. He needs to launder the money, so he starts opening up storefronts and he starts to contribute to the community and provide even more for his family while also shamelessly indulging in his wealth and setting up the entire town with a crazy cash flow. He has so much cash everywhere he doesn't know what the hell to do with it or hide it. Eventually, the SEALs are visited by Lucy's freeloading brother JB. Barry is not fond of him, and Lucy tells JB to get a job, so Barry sets him up working at the airport. JB ends up taking some money that Barry was hiding in the hangar, using it to buy himself a new car and to pick up a girl. The DEA starts catching on and notices planes slipping through the border. They start going after the pilots, but the planes have more fuel than the newer fancy jets and therefore more airtime, leading them to get away. The FBI have also investigated the financials of the entire town of Mina and realizes that money is gushing through it. Back in Mina, Barry is taken by the bank owner and is shown a vault that has been made exclusively for Barry. How about that? The same FBI agent decides to take a tour in Mina. He looks around and sees proper institutes, payphones and everyone is driving around with damn expensive cars. Later on while on a mission, Barry is being followed by the DEA and decides to intentionally crash land his plane. He loses a significant amount of coke, but he manages to get away. Meanwhile, the cartel runs into trouble when Pablo Escobar decides to declare war on the government of Colombia. This results in the cartel getting kicked out of Colombia. The only available spot to hand over the coke is Nicaragua. Barry meets with them to sort out the issues. At the same time, JB gets arrested by the sheriff after he is caught carrying a suitcase full of money. After bailing JB out, Barry drives him to a separate car so that he can leave and never return. JB curses Barry and drives away, only to be blown up by a car bomb. Barry didn't put the bomb in though, the cartel found JB to be a loose end and killed him. Barry gets rid of the car by dumping it in the woods. Schaefer meets with the head of the CIA, who tells him he is not happy about how half the guns has ended up with the cartel. He tells him to cancel the operation immediately. Barry and Schaefer meet to discuss what's been going on. Schaefer says the Contras have left since they just weren't interested in fighting. The CIA then gives out burn bags to each member. The instructions are to put anything with the name Barry on it to get rid of it. Barry knows he's being set up and attempts to move the entire stash of guns out of his airport. As he starts loading the items on the truck, the DEA come running in. Drop the f box, shithead! Barry puts his hands up and the ATF come barging in as well. ATF, put your guns down! Okay. Down. Down. Barry is so popular the state police and the FBI turn up as well, saying that Barry is theirs to collect. All four law enforcement agencies walk Barry into the office of the state attorney general. I'm Dana Sabota, state attorney general. She is hellbent on getting Barry locked up with the keys thrown away. She then gets an urgent call from the governor. She clears out the room and as they all wait outside, Barry offers them a Cadillac for their troubles of bringing him there. I'll get each and every one of you a caddy. They laugh at him but when Dana Sibota comes out and tells the state trooper to release him, all the agencies complain but they can't do a damn thing about it. Barry is then escorted by two men into a car. He doesn't know what the hell is going on, and as two more people jump in, they pull up to the White House gates. Barry cannot believe what he is seeing, but is sat down inside the White House. He is escorted into a meeting where the head of the DEA wants to end the Medellin cartel, while the colonel wants to prove that the communists in Central America are involved in the drug trade. They then have a private sit-down with Barry, where they tell him to keep dealing with the cartel for the sake of his country. He agrees and begins working for the White House. He has been given the task under Ronald Reagan's administration to gather dirt on the Sandinistas, all of whom are believed to be drug traffickers. They set up cameras in a plane for Barry to get photos as proof, but his co-pilot tells him that if the cartel finds the cameras, they're dead. Barry then starts making his way to the cartel. Once he lands, both him and his co-pilot are scared to death from an army awaiting them on the airstrip. When they lower the gates, they are forced to their knees from the guns being pointed at them. Barry tells them that Pablo Escobar is his friend, but they don't listen. They search the plane while Jorge comes to the scene. 
Barry relaxes to a familiar face, but Jorge orders the man to kill Barry. <laughs> Turns out this was a joke that Jorge found funny. The co-pilot peed his pants while Jorge is laughing hysterically. Barry sees Pablo and still has his trust. They immediately start loading the coke onto the plane. The co-pilot was snapping the best photos of the leader of the communists, Pablo and Jorge. Barry is seen smiling as he is getting away with all of it. The White House later releases the photos as propaganda, and Barry is seen in the photos. He is told that they were not supposed to be released to the public until after the cartel members were caught. The DEA then immediately go through Barry's house and take all the cash and gold that they can find. Lucy takes the kids back to their old home in Louisiana while Barry is stuck in court. Sibota was not giving up on getting Barry prosecuted. Though the judge convicts Barry to only 1,000 hours of community service, Sibota is not happy with that outcome but is silenced. Sibota! Sibota, I will hold you in contempt. Barry moves from hotel to hotel each night knowing that he is being looked for. On one such night, he is approached in his car by hitmen sent by Pablo Escobar, and he is subsequently murdered. The final scenes of the movie show that Schaefer got promoted after suggesting they get the Iranians to arm the Contras. The last scene is reporters asking the politicians if they were involved in the conspiracy between the Contras and the US, as they smirk to the question. Thank you for watching until the end. Make sure to hit the like button, or the dislike button twice if you didn't enjoy it. See you on the next one.